All right, couch chats are back, minus the couch. The chat today is about this new phenomenon, the electric scooters that are becoming really, really popular now as a way of getting around. And there's a, there's a few, few companies having a crack, um, but in particular, uh, talking about Lime, that startup Lime, and they, yeah, a lot of controversy, a lot of stuff happening, a lot of investment. They, they recently closed a round of like a, th a cheeky third of a bill and some pretty significant backers, um, Uber and Alphabet. Yep. Uh, Alphabet being the parent company of Google yep. now. So yeah, the, the concept of these scooters, uh, maybe we can get a little picture of it up here, Ryan, uh, while we're talking, but the concept of the scooter, just like the scooters that you see kids um, cruising around on, but they're electric, they can go up to nearly 30 k's an hour, um, so you can cruise around. And, and the concept is that, in terms of for Uber, if you think of getting a car, there's, there's, a, there's a little sweet spot distance that these work with where a little bit too far to walk, because people are lazy now and like tech is awesome and it does yeah. everything for us, but a little bit too, um, too short a trip for Uber, so the, their minimum $6 thing, or at six bucks in Australia, doesn't make, doesn't make sense. So they're trying to fit that gap there. You get the app, you unlock it. It's like a dollar fee and then 15, um, cents per 15 minutes or something for these scooters, so they're really cheap. The controversy has come because a couple of people have died in the last month on Lime scooters, so there's this whole safety issue around someone fell off and hit their head and, and died, and then another poor bugger uh, unfortunately got stuck underneath a car, pretty gruesome, and uh, and they, they managed to get him out, but then he died in hospital, pretty rough way to go. Um, so yeah, what How are you? How old were these people? I actually don't know their age, sorry, but okay. yeah. Yeah, no, because no. young people like like kids grow up with scooters, but if you're, if you're 50, 50 you like you've probably never used a scooter in your life or a skateboard. Yes. So jumping on one just because it costs a dollar is probably not the safest thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. They and probably should have done something to check or train people. They try to, when you look at their websites, they try and go, you know, they're being very political, this is the way you use it. And they're, tr they're really trying to to do that, but you're right. And, and helmets is a really big problem, right? Yeah. Like there's actually a state in the, which state was it, right? The Texas. Texas. There's uh, in California. So you can, um, they made it legal that you can ride it without a helmet, these these scooters. And yeah, the tricky thing is like, you already look pretty cheese dicky. <laughs> getting around on these things as it is, because they're, they're like the little kid scooters, plus whack a, a, a helmet on top of that, and it's not, like, in terms of appearance and aesthetics for people, then it's a bit of a deterrent. So people want to cruise around on these things without a helmet. So what do you think about, like, do you think it should exist? Like, both the bicycles and the scooters, like, what are your thoughts on I think on the on that industry. Yeah, I think I think technology and all these sharing economy things come in and they try and change the way that we do something that we've always traditionally done yes. and with that comes like a change in behavior and I think companies, startups, governments, whatever need to work together to make sure that that next evolution is like it, that people understand what they're doing and that it's safe. Yeah. They actually could give you like a like a like a screen with a demo or something like you you could have to watch something before you start yes that shows you what you can and cannot do in that city and that's the yeah. thing it's going to be different from city to city so depending on where you log in on the app you're going to have like a different onboarding slash intro video and yeah. maybe the first time you ride that thing it's like 10 kilometers an hour it's like really really slow but oh, then that's smart. as you like as you get more kilometers with the company, you get to go faster and faster. So they could do, oh, that's smart. So you could do like IoT, Internet of Things, connect in the app and choose the speed, which the only example I've heard of that, do you remember that drone? There's a drone company where you, you order the drone. I wish you ordered the drone and it flew to you. That would be badass. Not the case. It comes in the mail. It comes in the mail, unfortunately, which just loses a bit of its magic. But what is magic is, actually they have the app, you get the drone and then you start flying the drone around and you, and you, you start loving it and then there's a, an, an in-app purchase in the app that makes the, the drone go twice as fast. 
maybe that's not built into the hardware that they've got currently. Yeah. It would certainly be good, at least politically, for them to, to have that. But the downside is we often talk at Pitchback about the magic moment. Yes. Like it's so important that your first experience is good. And for me, I want to get I want to get the max speed on my first crack. So I think it's like education. Like if you're going to bring something like that to the city, education about what people like. What what do you do when you see one of those people and yeah. then find a way to train people how to use them properly? And Melbourne's not going to get them anyway because O bike like oh, yeah, got destroyed in Melbourne because literally people just threw them in the river and. Yeah, hid hid them in the garage. Shame on you, Melbourne, for... Shame on you. Shame on you. It's not, it's not on character for you. Oh, yeah, you can use one of our bikes. You just you... have to pick it up off the bottom of the, of the Yarra. Exactly. <laughs> I think, for sure, we found it super convenient not having a car. Yep, yep. Like, cars are just insurance and fuel and parking and it's Huge just... Cost, yeah. yeah. You can get away with spending, if you live in a city, in a... In a in a city, you can you can get away with spending pretty similar per year or a little bit yeah. more, but without all, all that extra stress. Yeah. Um, and you can have fur fees. <laughs> and then and then go places, so that's cool. I guess like, yeah, wrapping up, I would say, th the frustrating thing for me seeing these things happen, like it's unfortunate around these deaths, obviously, but the frustrating thing is, change is inevitable. You cannot slow down innovation. And in Melbourne here, um, Uber was illegal for a long time. What's the point? Like, literally, you have to imagine what the future is going to look like in five years and if everyone's driving around electric scooters, which probably is going to be the case for that type of distance, then what's the f point of getting in the way of that innovation? It's just old school people trying to impose their old school thinking. What is the, if it's inevitable, don't slow it down. Just let it go through, regulate it like you said. Like try, and try to try to regulate it, yeah. which took, which it took over like ages to get there. Yes. Um, but if you, just push back, like startups will just do it because it's not illegal, but it's not legal, but it's not illegal, so they'll do it anyway. They'll do it. Um, and I think if people, just general public, embraced it a little bit more and tried to be sensible about the way that they went about these scooters, we would be fine. Can't it's be that be hard. Fine. Can't be that hard. Just scooter around <laughs> for medium distances. <laughs>